everyone. Welcome to your Pilates mini flows class. Our focus today is going to be on hips, glutes, and kind of functional stability within the hips. So this is a great one for everyone, but especially my runners and my cyclists out there. For equipment, you're just going to need a resistance band loop. It is optional though. If you don't have one on hand, you can do this without it. Um, it'll be around our thighs for the first and third flow. So you can go on the heavier side with it. You won't need a huge range of motion out of it. If you're new to Pilates mini flows classes, best way to describe the structure is to picture a traditional Pilates mat class. We're essentially taking a little snippet out of that flow and we're turning it into a circuit of sorts, repeating it. We'll have three different flows or snippets today. If there's unilateral work, you will complete four sets of that little snippet twice on each side. If it's bilateral work, just three sets. Uh, the sequences are just like three, four minutes long. So they're pretty short. You rest and then repeat. I'll give you a preview of the flow before each one. So you'll kind of know what to expect and then I'll verbally guide you through it. We'll start with a warm up. You won't need your band for it, but just have it close by because uh, we will use that for our first flow. The general flow of this class is we'll start on the mat and build our way up to standing, but I actually want us to start warming up standing before we come down. So in a neutral stance, I want you to reach your arms forward. You're gently engaged through the core, slightly unlocked through the knees. Arms are parallel to the floor. Now I want you to inhale here through the nose, expanding through the rib cage. As you start to slowly exhale out through the mouth, I want you to nod the chin and start reaching your arms forward. So we're coming into this flexed position, but we're just flexing through the mid spine. Stay pretty upright through your lumbar spine. Now stay here for an inhale. And as you do, think of expanding into the back side of your rib cage. On your exhale, I want you to stack the spine back up tall. Good. Inhale here. As you exhale, nod the chin round forward. So you should feel this opening through your mid back. Inhale, direct your breath into that space between your shoulder blades. Exhale, stack the spine back up tall. One more time. We inhale tall through the spine. Exhale, reach the arms forward, keeping them parallel to the floor. Stay for an inhale. Then on your exhale, you're going to stack the spine back up. Now I want to keep your arms reaching forward just to help with balance. I want you to shift your weight into the right foot and I want you to bring your left leg in front of you just to a slight hover. And I just want you to swing it side to side. It doesn't have to be big. So it's out to the side and then crossing midline. So we're engaged to the core to help with balance here. And if this is throwing off your balance, slow it down. You can always have your hand on a wall. Okay. Now we're going to keep the focus on the swinging leg, but we're just going to turn the swing into a hip circle, kind of like a march. So we're going to bring it through center. Now, as you start to cross it midline, bend the knee, lift it up, open up, circle it around, press it down. So you're mirroring me tracing circles. So we're mobilizing through this left hip joint, but we're stabilizing through the right side, which will be kind of a theme throughout this class. Let's switch direction of the circle. So up and out, across and down. Again, use a wall if you need some balance assistance. I know it's early. One more circle and then let's switch sides. So spread out through the left toes, plant down firmly through that left side, right leg comes out at a small hover in front and just going to swing it side to side, cross midline out to the side, staying as level through the hips though as possible. If balance is off, slow it down. Okay. So instead of a swing, control it just so that there's a little less momentum. We'll turn this into that kind of marching hip circle. So I want you to settle in the center. Now, as you bend the knee, pull it up across midline, open it up and lower. Now I'm not bringing this right foot all the way to touch the ground. I'm really challenging the stability on this left side, but if it is too much, then plant that foot on the mat, pause for a second, and then go into your next circle. Let's switch direction. So now it's up and out across and down. Woo. One more. Both feet plant on the ground, pedal out the knees. And I want you to come into a forward fold. So we're just going to roll forward in this forward fold, just bend and straighten through the knees. So we're opening up through the backs of the legs, through the hamstrings. Our first flow will be for the posterior chain will be in a prone position. And I want us to make sure that we're open through the hamstrings before we get into it. We're going to take this into an inchworm. So hands are going to come to the mat. Keep your legs as straight as possible, but a little bend is absolutely fine. And I just want you to walk your hands out to a plank position, lowering the hips. 
and then pike your hips up as you walk the hands back into your forward fold. Again, we walk the hands out and we walk them back in. Next time you walk your hands out to the plank, I want you to pause. Pause in your plank and then just drop your knees down into a tabletop. To finish up our warm up, we're going to do hip circles. You can untuck your toes. Let's start with that left side. So you're gonna start with a donkey kick. You're gonna stamp that left foot up to the ceiling. Now you're gonna externally rotate, windshield wipe, bring that heel over to the right. You're gonna swing the left knee up to the left, and then you're gonna lower it down, keep going. So it's hip circles, but they're very slow and controlled. You're breaking them down into those four parts. You press up, you rotate, you swing, and you lower. One more this direction, and then we just switch direction. Same leg though. So controlled movement within that hip joint. All right, let's switch direction. So now you hydrant, sweep it back, rotate to parallel, and lower. Left knee lifts to the left. You sweep it back. Foot rotates up to the ceiling. You lower twice more the side. So we're trying to stay level through the pelvis. We're not rolling open through the hips. We're just moving that thigh bone within the hip joint. Lower down. All right, let's take it over to the other side. We start with the donkey kick on the right. So the right foot stamps up towards the ceiling, firing through the glutes. Windshield wiper the heel over to the left. So you're externally rotated. Sweep the right knee up and out to the right. Lower it down. Keep going in that direction. We are not sinking into our lower back as that leg lifts up. So core is engaged here. Last time this direction. All right, let's reverse direction of the circles. So you hydrant, lift the right knee up to the right, sweep it back, rotate foot up to the ceiling, and lower three more times. Last time. lower the knees down. Okay, I want you to grab your resistance band. We're gonna put it around our thighs. I'm gonna show you a quick preview of what to accept, expect from this first flow. We're gonna be in a prone position for this one, band around our thighs. And just a note, if you are someone who has a big arch to your lower back, I might recommend using a dish towel folded like this into a thin pad and putting it under your hip bones. When you lay down, that is gonna help hold your pelvis in a more neutral position so you don't feel all that crunching in your lower back. To start, heels are going to be together, pressing in towards each other, knees are bent. It's a heel squeeze lift, lifting those knees up and off the mat. We then combo, you lift, straighten, bend, lower. We then just hold it a hover, straighten, bend, straighten, bend. Maintaining the external rotation through the legs, we're then one, one leg at a time. We're gonna lift, lower to the mat, lift, lower to the mat. We then do both together and add in a little abduction at the top, pressing against that band. Lift, push out, lower. From there, we're gonna rotate the thighs to parallel, same thing. Lift one at a time, trying to get the glutes to fire a second before the hamstrings, where they're gonna combo. They lift up, they push out, they come in, they lower down. We finish by holding the legs at a hover and just pushing out. So it's a four minute flow. Every 30 seconds, we change to a different variation and I'll walk you through that. This is a longer sequence, so you're just gonna to have to complete it twice. We will do a third round, but it'll be short and it'll just be focused on the last minute or so, okay? All right, let's find our prone position. All right, band around your thighs. We're gonna stack one hand on top of the other. Forehead is just gonna be resting down on your palms. Neutral through the spine, so brace through your abdominals. Knees a little wider than hips distance apart, heels together so we're externally rotated through the legs. Squeezing the heels in, we're gonna fire through the glutes to lift those knees to a hover. Let's go. So it's just a small lift. Think of reaching the knees long and up. You're lifting by firing into the glutes, not by rocking into your lower back. So we need that bracing of the abdominal wall. Up next, we'll just combo this. You'll lift, you'll straighten the legs, you'll bend them back in, you'll lower. Fire through the glutes to lift. Combo, so we lift to a hover. Straighten the legs, keeping them externally rotated so thighs wrapping outward. Bend them back in, squeezing the heels, and then lower. You lift, you straighten, you bend, you lower. I want you to feel glutes as you lift. Hamstrings curl back in, lower. 
Now I'm pointing at the ankle. When I straighten, I'm flexing as I bend in. If that doesn't overcomplicate things, I want you to do that. Up next, we'll hold at the hover. Let's go. Just bend and straighten. So the knees are staying just slightly off the mat. We're pressing out through the band gently as we do this. Flex and bend. Straighten to lower. Now coming up next, we're going to maintain the external rotation through the legs. They're going to be straight. You're going to lower them all the way down to the mat. We'll lift one straight leg up at a time. Let's go, legs stay straight, lower them down to the ground. Now reaching long through one leg, lift it up, lower, we're just alternating sides. So think of wrapping your thighs outward, they're externally rotated. So think tops of your feet pointing slightly outward, lift and lower. We'll take this to a combo up next, both legs will lift, we'll press out on the band, then we'll lower. All right, so now both legs together, lift to a hover, press out on the band, resist back in, lower to the mat. So coming up, this is very important. We're gonna do that same thing, alternating legs, but we're gonna do them with the thighs parallel. So right now we're externally rotated. Coming up next, thighs will just face the floor. We'll do legs hips distance apart, parallel, you'll lower them to the mat. Let's go, so thighs parallel. We lift one leg up and down. Now this one is very important. I want you to notice, are you able to keep the legs straight when you lift it up or is that knee wanting to bend? If the knee is wanting to bend, that suggests you might, your hamstrings are dominant over your glutes. I want the glutes to fire to lift the leg. Up next, we'll do both together, but I just wanted to start alternating so you can notice if there are differences between the sides. All right, both together, reach long through the legs, lift, push out on the band, same combo. Bring it in, lower. Thighs are parallel, no rotation. Lift, abduct, bring in, and lower. So you're active through the quads, through the front of the thighs to help hold the legs straight so that the hamstrings don't totally take over for the glutes. We're gonna finish by holding the legs at a hover and we'll just pulse out on the band. Let's go. Pulse out. Out, keep reaching the legs long. You're breathing. You're engaged through your abdominals. Out, out. You're almost there. I know this is a long flow. We're only gonna do the full thing twice. Pulse out and out. Can you fire through the glutes to get the legs a little higher in that hover without sinking into your lower back? and rest. Hands under shoulders. I want you to press yourself back, rounding the spine up towards the ceiling to get some flexion here. So we're going to repeat that entire thing one more time. You have 45 seconds to rest here. The third time we go through this, we're just going to focus on the, the last 90 seconds where the thighs are parallel, okay? Really trying to play around with that idea of being able to fire the glutes a split second before the hamstrings so that the knee doesn't bend, okay? All right, let's get back in position here. Forehead down on stacked hands. Knees can be hips distance or a smidge wider. Bend at the knees, heels in, so we're externally rotated through that hip joint. Bracing through that abdominal wall so we're not pushing our stomach down into the mat. And from here, squeezing the heels, we just lift those knees to a hover and lower. So you're not rocking the pelvis when you do this. You're not tilting your pelvis forward in order to get the knees up. You're firing through the glutes. So the, the knees may barely come off the ground, that's fine. Honestly, even just practicing squeezing the heels in and clenching your glutes and then relaxing is beneficial here. We'll combo up next, we'll lift, we'll straighten. I'm gonna add in that point and flex when I straighten and bend. If it overcomplicates it though, don't worry about it, let's go. We'll lift the knees to a hover. Straighten the legs, reaching them long, keeping them externally rotated. Heel squeeze in, lower down. And now I'm talking a lot about keeping it in the glutes and out of the lower back, and that is absolutely true. It's not that you're going to feel nothing in your lower back, okay? Your lower back is working to stabilize your pelvis. It's just that you should feel the glutes being the movers, not your lower back, okay? We're holding the hover now, and let's just straighten and bend. 
straighten, point, reach long through the legs, bend, squeeze those heels in, trying to maintain the knees at a hover. Up next, we're going to maintain the external rotation of the legs. They will be straight. They will be down on the mat. Hips distance are a little wider. And we'll just lift and lower one leg at a time. Keep pressing out on that band. All right, legs are straight. Lower them to the mat. Alternate, lifting one and then the next. Now, with the external rotation, it's probably a little easier to feel glutes without the hamstrings taking over. We'll challenge that a little more when we bring the thighs to parallel, but for now they stay externally rotated. Reach long through the leg, fire through the glutes to lift. We'll do both together, adding in that little abduction at the top. All right, so both legs reach long and lift to a hover. Press out on the band. Resist in, lower. Notice if you're holding tension in your shoulders, try to relax them. They're not hiking up to the ears. We're going to find that parallel positioning of the legs up next. So we'll no longer be rotated, thighs to the mat, legs hips distance apart. We'll alternate lifting one and then the next. Let's go. Parallel. Reach along through one leg, fire and lift, lower down. So often, if you are a runner or a cyclist, often what I will see when you try to do this exercise is that bending of the knee, the hamstrings wanting to take over. So this one is a really good one to practice if you find that you're having a really hard time lifting without bending the knee. We'll do both together up next, adding in that little press out at the top, right? Let's go reach long through the legs, fire through the glutes to lift to a hover. Press out, resist in, and lower. Notice, is it harder for you to feel this in your glutes when the legs are parallel? I know it is for me. Again, think active quads. That's going to help hold the legs straight so that you can access the glutes. All right, let's hold it a hover to finish. It's just that press out and in, out and in, reach long through the legs, really squeeze your glutes, okay? Weird visual, but make fists with your butt cheeks here. Out and in. Maybe you get the legs a smidge higher through the glutes though, not the lower back. Notice are those knees wanting to bend, fire through the quads. Oh, rest. Let's press back into that shell stretch, that active child's pose rounding the spine up to the ceiling. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're just going to repeat that stuff that we did with the thighs parallel, okay? So just a quick 90-second finisher. I'm not going to make you do that whole <laughs> sequence. Still, you have 45 seconds to recover here. So another reason I wanted to start this class with prone work is if you are a runner, a cyclist, it, we tend to overuse the hip flexors, right? It's a very repetitive hip flexion motion. So when we come prone, you're not able to flex the hips. We're holding them in this open position. All right, let's go. Lay down. Forehead stacked on hands, thighs parallel, hips distance apart, engage through your core. We're going to alternate lifting one leg up at a time while the other presses down into the mat. Let's go reach long through a leg, lift, lower. Think length, stretch the quad, then lift. Side to side. It's important to mix in some unilateral work so you can notice differences between the sides. Up next, we'll do both together, adding in that abduction at the top. All right, let's go. Both legs lift, press out, resist in and lower. So notice, are you getting the glutes to fire? I'm having a hard time getting my left side glutes to fire in this one. That's okay, we have good days, we have challenging days, Days are different, sides are different. We're gonna hold it a hover and we'll just do that press out on the band and then you are done in this prone position. Let's go, hold those legs at a hover, just press out and in. You're engaged through your core so we're not crunching into the lower back. Really squeeze into your glutes. Reach the legs long. If you feel any cramping, try relaxing your toes. Whew. 
shaky. Almost there. Oh, and done. Legs down, press back. You have a little over a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you flow number two. No resistance band for the second flow. We're gonna start in a side table top position with one knee down. That top leg is gonna lift and lower with the knee bent. From there, it still lifts and lowers, but you kick it straight as you lift, you bend as you lower. We're then gonna do a three-part combo. You lift, bent, you kick straight, and then you're gonna bring that leg forward coming off your hand, coming into a split lunge position. Back to the side tabletop, bent knee, kick straight, press it forward. So we're moving through different planes of motion here. We then build off of that, tucking our back toes under. So when we come into that split lunge position, we're gonna pulse, lifting the back knee off the floor, lower it down, you're gonna kick to the side, bring it forward, a little pulse, kick to the side. We finish in that side position, uh, that side tabletop with the leg straight, little pulse up, 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 like that. We're gonna complete four sets of this one. The flow sequence is shorter than the previous one, okay? Let's go. So to get into the proper position for this, mirror me and start in almost a mermaid position. So you're gonna have your left knee down and your right leg straight. And then we're just gonna tilt over to the side, bringing this left hand down to the mat, okay? Now, you can play around with the angle of this bottom left shin to find what is most comfortable for you. If having it point straight back isn't working for your hips, angle it in a little bit and that should help, okay? You want shoulder right over this wrist. So we're gonna start with this top right leg bent and we'll just lift and lower it. Let's go, we lift and lower. 30 seconds here to start. So still outer hips, glutes focus. But now with the movement through different planes of motion, we're kind of getting that functional stability and control element in. So coming up next, we're gonna keep with the lift and lower, but we'll be kicking this leg straight and up and then bending as we lower. Let's go. So you kick it up and straight, bend. Hips are staying stacked, one on top of the other. Don't worry about how high up this leg gets. A little bit just depends on mobility through your hips. If you're feeling limited, that is okay. So we have that three-part combo coming up. It'll lift bent, it'll kick straight, and then we're gonna step this right foot forward, bringing our left hand off the ground. We'll do the first one slow together. All right, so we lift bent, kick it straight. Now push off this hand, step it forward, you're in a split lunge. And then let's reverse it, back to the side position. Lift bent, kick straight, brace through your core, come up centered, bring it back. Now, because we are adding in this step forward into a lunge, woo, I would recommend having this left shin pointing straight back now. We're here for a full minute, working on control and stability. That for the next change coming up, you're gonna tuck your bottom left toes under. It'll be a kick straight to the side. We'll come into that split lunge and we'll lift the knees to a hover. All right, so let's go. I want you to tuck your left toes under. So we step forward into the split lunge. Now just pulse up and down. As you come into the side tabletop, kick that right leg long. Bring it in, pulse it, kick to the side. So building a little heat as well. So it's a little quicker, a little more dynamic, but it's still controlled. We just have one more piece of this series. We'll hold in that side tabletop position. We'll just pulse the straight leg up and down. And that'll be quick, it'll just be 15 seconds, okay? Well, let's go, side tabletop position, leg is straight. Lift up, up, you pulse it, up, up, almost there. You get a recovery after this. And then we'll take it over to the other side. Oh, and rest. Good job. All right, you can come off the wrist for a second. Maybe take a little counter side stretch. So we're gonna do that same thing, just 30 seconds to recover here. We're gonna do it on the other side. 
you know, the sequence by now. Again, great way to set up into it is to kind of start in this mermaid position. You would have right knee down, left leg long, and then you just tilt over. We'll start with this knee bent. And again, you can play around with the angle of your shin to start. When we add in that lunge, I'll have you have it point straight back. All right, let's go. Bent knee lifts and lowers. So hopefully this side you are feeling not just the moving left side, but your bottom supporting right side as well, because we just burnt it out. We'll switch it up a little bit. This top leg lifting and lowering will kick straight and then bend as it comes in. Let's go. Kick it straight, bend it in. No excessive arching into the lower back. So we're staying long through the spine. You are open through the chest. So we have that three part combo coming up. Lift bent, kick straight, and then we step the left foot forward into that lunge position. So let's take our bottom right shin and have it pointing back. All right, let's go. Bent, kick straight. Push off that right hand, left foot steps forward, lunge, woo! And then bring it back to that side tabletop. Bent, straight. Step it forward, stabilizing and controlling through this right side glute. I recommend exhaling as you step forward so that your brace the abdominal wall is gonna help with balance. You're here for a full minute. Okay, coming up, it's just gonna be that kick straight and then the step forward with the pulse. So I want you to tuck your back right toes under. Let's go. We kick it straight. We step it forward. Pulse, lifting that back knee off the floor. Come to tabletop, kick. Forward, we pulse. To the side, to the front. Pulse, you're mirroring me. We'll finish in the side tabletop. Straight leg will pulse up and down. Just 15 seconds. Let's go. Side tabletop, lift up and up. You're reaching the leg long. So picture I'm standing at your feet, gently tugging on your leg. It's almost like you're taking weight out of your hand. Ooh, rest. Okay, I'm gonna give you a full minute here. You're at the halfway point. So let's just take a quick outer hip stretch on either side. So we can come to one foot outside the other thigh, hug the knee in towards your chest, maybe take a little twist, and then just switch sides. Hug knee in, sit up nice and tall, maybe a little twist. All right, so we're gonna do that one more time on each side. <sighs> They're like, I want to go on my W-A-L-K. I'm almost done. So mirror me for the setup. You're going to have your left knee down, your right leg long, so kind of in a mermaid, and you just sort of tilt over to the side. So we'll have this right leg doing the moving, bottom left side doing the stabilizing. Start with the knee bent, and we'll just lift and lower. Let's go. Lift and lower. Squeezing into the side, but the outer hip to abduct that leg. If your wrist starts to bother you, you can always do it on tented fingertips. Instead, that can help. Stay stable to this bottom shoulder, pushing the floor away so we're not sinking down into it. You shouldn't be shrugging the shoulder up to our ears. We'll take it into our kick straight as we lift and lower. Let's go. Kick it straight as you lift, bend as you lower. Oof. Oof. 
Don't worry about how high the leg gets. Only as high as you can without collapsing into this bottom side body. Three part combo coming up, lift bent. Kick straight, we step the right foot forward into the lunge. Let's go. Bent, kick straight. Step it forward into your lunge, back to the side position. Here for a minute. Whew. So when you're transitioning from the side position into that front lunge position, bottom side glutes are doing a lot of stability work. Coming up, you're gonna tuck those left toes under. It'll be a kick into a front lunge with the pulse. Let's go, tuck the left toes under. Kick your right leg straight, bring it forward, pulse. As you come to the side, kick. As you bring it in, release the hand from the floor. Kick forward. Approaching those final 15 seconds. We'll be in our side tabletop position. Straight right leg will pulse up and down. Well, let's go, side tabletop. You pulse up and up, reaching long through the leg. Up and up. Hips are stacked, so we're not rolling open or closed. Pulse, almost there. Woo, rest. All right, you have 30 seconds. Got to do that one final time. And then we are done with our second flow. I'm just checking to make sure I have enough time left. Yep, just barely. We got this. My camera only lets me film for uh, 20 minutes at a time and then I have to reset it. It's so annoying. Okay, let's do it. Mirror me for the setup. Right knee down, left leg long, then just tilt over, planting your right hand to the floor. We'll start bent knee, lift and lower this left side. Let's go. Final few minutes, our third flow, it'll be a standing sequence. So we're up off the mat after this. We'll lift and lower, but we'll kick this leg straight as we lift up next. You know it. Let's go, we kick, bend and lower. When you kick it straight, make sure you're not flaring open through your rib cage and arching into your lower back. So you're gonna be able to see your toes out of the corner of your eye. Three part combo coming up, lift bend, kick straight, step forward into that lunge, removing this bottom right hand from the floor. Let's go. Bent, kick, step forward, woo. Control over speed. Get ready to tuck the right toes under. It'll be that split lunge pulse into the side kick up next. All right, let's do it. Tuck your back toes under. Pulse, kick. We're in our last minute of work in flow number two. You got it. Step. 
side, forward. We'll finish in that side position, straight leg pulses. Almost there, stay with me. All right, hold straight, little pulses up. Reach long through the leg, I don't care how high it is. Length through the spine, lift, lift. Done, woo! All right, you have a little over a minute to recover. I'm gonna show you our third and final flow. To start, we're going to do a single leg calf raise and then a hip hinge. So it's a little combo, hips back and forward and then single leg calf raise. Now you can either have the other foot completely off the floor or you'll have it staggered behind you for a little bit of balance support as you do that. From there, you're gonna hold the hip hinge and we're just going to abduct that hovering leg. We then make this a little more dynamic. As you lift up, you straighten both legs, you hinge, you bend them back in. We finish by just holding upright and straight, little pulses up, up, up. So quick as flow yet, but it is challenging. Um, if you would like some assistance with balancing, you can again do that staggered position with the feet or have a chair or a stool or a counter or a wall nearby to keep one hand on, okay? And that can help a lot. Four times through this one, let's go. So let's start with our right leg as the base leg, and then the left will be the one doing the abducting. Let's all start in a staggered stance, and then if you're feeling good, we can lift the left foot off and balance on the right completely, but we'll all start staggered. So spread out through your right toes, really plant down through that right foot. Feet are hips distance apart, and then I want you to step your left foot back so the toes are kind of in line with the heel and lift that heel up, okay? That's gonna be your support. So to start, it's gonna be a hip hinge back and forward and then a calf raise on this right side, okay? You can have arms reaching forward for balance as well. All right, let's go. So hips slide back in a little hinge, hips come forward. Calf raise, lifting that right heel and lowering. Now you can do the whole 45 seconds with your, the ball of your left foot on the ground, staggered for support. If you're feeling good though, maybe you try bringing that left foot to a hover for both the calf raise and the hinge, or maybe just one or the other, okay? So we can lift and lower this left foot off the mat as needed. Right side is our base side. So coming up next, we're gonna hold the hinge position and our left leg is gonna be at a hover, the knee will be bent and we're just gonna abduct that leg. All right, let's hold the hip hinge, hinge position. Hinge position, can't talk, there we go. And then we're just gonna lift and lower. We're stabilizing through this right side as the left leg lifts up and down. Keep reaching your hips back, think equal waist through both sides of the waist, you're not crunching up on one side. Now we're gonna make this movement a little more dynamic. As the leg abducts, we're gonna kick it straight, we're gonna stand up. So both legs will straighten and then you'll hinge and both will bend. Let's go. So you straighten, kick out. You bend, hinge, draw it in. Hips moving forward, squeeze the glutes. Hips slide back. Woo! We'll finish holding straight. It'll just be a little pulse up on that left side. All right, let's go. Come to that upright position. It's a little pulse up, 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 pushing against the band. Tall through the spine, brace the core, firing through your glutes. Oh, rest, shake it out. All right, so we're gonna do that same thing. Left side will be the focus though. Again, use balance support if you need it, okay? So 30 seconds to rest here. We'll spread out through that left foot. So what I want you to be mindful of as we do this is what's going on with this left knee. Is it wanting to wobble inward? I need it tracking in line with your middle to pinky toes the whole time. Stagger your right foot behind you, lift that back right heel. Okay, we'll start with the hinge to the calf raise. Hip slide back, most of the weight in your left foot. Hip slide forward, calf raise, lifting that left heel and lowering. The ball of your right foot can stay on the floor for support the entire time. 
If you want to advance it though, you bring this right foot to a hover. So push down through the big toe. Oh, that was bad as the heel lifts up. So I notice a lot of rolling out on the ankle. So I'm going to keep my right foot down for support for the final 15 seconds of this one. Heel lifts straight up and down. Almost think of squeezing the heel in. We're going to hold the hinge position up next. Right leg will come to a hover. Let's go. We're going to do that abduction. So it's a lift up. Now, as this right leg lifts up, don't let this left knee wobble inward. You can always have your left hand on a chair, a counter, a wall for balance support. We'll make this dynamic, straightening both the legs as we come up, hinging and bending the knees as the hips slide back. Let's go. Straight and come upright, squeeze through the glutes, fire the abdominals at the top. Keep the spine neutral, but slide the hips back in a hinge. We'll finish standing. Little pulse up with that straight right leg. All right, let's go. Little pulse up, up. Oh, rest. All right, take a full minute here. I want to give ample recovery time because if we're so fatigued that we can't balance at all, then this becomes a little ineffective. So I want you to get enough recovery time that we can get through the flow. Now, maybe the band is too much. Maybe you ditch the band and just do this one body weight, okay? That is an option. Just one more time each side, and then we are done with this class. Let me cool it down. All right, so we're gonna plant down through the right foot, spread out through the toes, ground down through that foot. So you've weight in all three corners of the foot. Left foot behind, lift the heel, it's staggered, hinge to calf raise, hips slide back and forward. Calf raise, lifting that right heel and lowering. Advanced version, your left foot is at a hover. There goes my balance. We'll hold the hinge position up next. We'll lift and lower this left leg. All right, hold hinged on the right, bring your left foot to a hover. Lift, lift. Keep reaching the hips back. We're open through the chest. As you create tension on the band, don't let the knee wobble inward with it. We'll stand upright as we straighten. We'll hinge as we bend up next. Let's go. We straighten and come upright. We hinge and bend. Come on, under 30 seconds and then you're done with this leg. You got it. We'll hold up and straight and we'll pulse to finish. Let's go. Final 15. Up, up. Notice how severely are you leaning over to the right? Can you shift that rib cage just slightly into center? Woo, it's hard. Done. All right, 30 seconds. Shake it out. One final time through. Left leg will be the focus, then we cool it down. You got this. We create a nice stable base to the left foot. When I say weight in all three corners of the foot, 
I mean the big toe and the big toe mound, the pinky side of your foot and the heel, okay? So we're gonna take this right foot, stagger it behind the left, heel is lifted. So just the ball of this right foot is down, hinge calf raise. Hips slide back, hips come forward. Calf raise, lifting that left heel and lowering. Advanced. You can take your right foot off the mat. So I'm choosing to take my right foot off the mat for the calf raise, but I'm putting it down for support on the hinge. I find that is a good combo for me that is challenging but doable and not making my form get totally sloppy. I've been mentioning runners a lot throughout class. If you are a runner, the calf raise is like the number one exercise you should master. Master might be the wrong word, but work on. We're gonna hold the hip hinge up next. Let's go, slide those hips back. Right knee is at a hover and we abduct. We lift up and out to the side. Lift up and out to the side, keep going. I'm just hitting my couch. We'll make it a little more dynamic, straightening the legs as we come upright, bending as we hinge. Let's go. Upright, legs straighten. Bend as the hips slide back. Straighten and press out. Hinge and come in. Come on, you have 30 seconds of work left. We'll hold at the top and pulse the straight leg to finish. Let's go. Pulse it up, up. Again, can you shift slightly to the right? Up, up. Oh, done. Awesome work. I'm gonna bring you through a quick cool down. You can take the band off. Great work with that one. From here, let's find a forward fold and just release that upper body. You can kind of pedal out the knees, bending into one at a time, dipping that same shoulder towards it. Just a little bit of release here. And then staying in this forward fold position, I want you to take your right foot, cross it behind the left, and then you're gonna walk your hands over to the left. Good, and then coming through center, uncross, and now take your left foot, cross it behind the right, and then walk your hands over to the right. <sighs> Walking your hands through center, let's uncross the feet. I want you to walk your hands out into a plank position, and then right from plank, lift your hips up into a downward dog. You can pedal out the heels a little bit. And then when you're ready, you can just settle into that calf stretch, pressing both heels down towards the mat as you press your chest towards your thighs. Now lifting up your left leg, I want you to bend the knee and peel open through the hips. So you're kind of stacking your left hip on top of right. We're gonna come into a half pigeon. If you know that's a little too much for your body or doesn't work for your hips, you can always do a figure four stretch, seated or laying down instead. Otherwise though, let's square the hips. Let's shift forward, bringing the left knee behind the left wrist, kick the heel across towards the right, put the shin down, walk your right leg back, and you can lower down forehead to your forearms. <sighs> Might feel good to prop this left hip up on a pillow or a block, whatever works for your body. Now I'm just gonna keep you in these stretches, these, this half pigeon for about 30 seconds but I know that this can be a nice one to really sort of marinate in. <laughs> First word that came to mind. So if you would like to stay in it longer, please do. Otherwise, we're just gonna take a couple more breaths. Again, stay if that's what your body wants. If you're ready to switch to the other side though, let's transition back through a downward dog. 
This time your right leg lifts up, bend the knee, peel open through the hip, stacking right hip on top of left. Keep pushing chest towards thigh. And then we'll come into half pigeon, so we square the hips, shift forward, right knee behind right wrist, and then kick the shin across, scoot your left leg back. And you can lower forehead to forearms. I want you to stay here as long as feels good. When you're ready to come out of it, we'll roll to that outer right hip, swinging the left leg around, coming to a seated position. Let's take one breath together to wrap it up. We inhale, arms up. We exhale, release. And that is your class. Awesome work today.